Good morning, everyone. Scooter here at Granville Guitars in St. Petersburg, Florida, coming to you from the Granville Guitars World Headquarters this morning. Today, we're going to talk about potentiometers. Been a lot of discussion about these little guys in my shop lately, and I uh, just want to kind of go over a few things and, and make sure that everyone realizes what they are and how they work. Now, the genesis of a potentiometer or a variable resistor is this. This is a resistor. This particular resistor is a 1 meg carbon comp resistor and its composition allows it to resist 1 million ohms at a given wattage. In this case uh, this is a half watt I believe. Uh, yeah, it's a half watt, sorry. Um, this is useful for all sorts of electronics. Uh, and all sorts of different uh, responsibilities. It's also useful to be able to vary a resistance uh, to create volume, to create uh, tone roll-offs, all sorts of different things. Most amplifiers have these hiding behind their knobs. Um, it's been that way forever, unless it's a, a software-based amplifier. In, case, in that case, you have an encoder, which is computer software. Now, as you look at the potentiometer from the rear, you'll see that it has three pins on it. Three, two, and one is how they're typically numbered. All right. Pin number two, the center pin, is also called the wiper. That is the one that can actually vary in a difference between this pin and this pin. There are a lot of complex formulas and there's also variances in manufacturing that govern the differences between these two. But essentially what happens is when you turn the shaft on the pot, which, is, which the knob is connected to, it will continuously vary the resistance between pin 3 and pin 2, and also pin 1 and pin 2. All right, here is an old potentiometer that basically fell apart. Uh, don't, uh, all you vintage fanatics out there, uh, fear not, this is not an old pot that I pulled apart. It actually broke, as you can see. Uh, there was, there's a collar in there that holds the shaft, uh, which is the piece that turns and this whole thing actually fell apart and uh, this is what I'm using for the demonstration today. So what we have here is the inside of one of these potentiometers and you can see if you flip it over that they're very they're constructed very similarly. This is a newer pot. Um, this is how they were made you know, back in the 60s. Um, you can see the inside of it, how it's constructed. It's quite interesting. Here is the wiper, which is the center bit. Okay, Over this sits this part. This is the wiper right here. And as, as you can see, the whole thing sits over the top of this. And the middle of this brass connector, which is part of the wiper, actually constantly contacts the collar of the wiper up here. You can see it has these two contacts down here that are constantly in contact with this collar and constantly in contact with this brass collar and connect here to the wiper contact. Now what they are varying, you can see those two little little contacts right here. There is a carbon trace all the way around here. And that carbon is the same stuff that our resistor was made out of. This guy right here. Okay, So it varies the resistance as this collar turns. All right, So it's constantly the collar, or the wiper rather, is constantly in contact right here. And it's varying a resistance. And you can see the wear over time. This pot was made in the mid-60s. So it's been used quite a bit. Um, you can see the wear from, from where the wiper contacts have actually rubbed on that thing. And sometimes that, that completely wears them out. But in this case, it was actually still good. It's just that the collar holding the whole thing together broke. So as you can see, if you were to take a meter, a voltometer, and touch anywhere along here and along here, you'd be able to get different resistances all along this collar. What's neat about a potentiometer is it gives you two opportunities for adjustment. Okay, it gives you 
an opportunity to vary the resistance between this connection point and this connection point and also between this connection point and this connection point. Obviously the two resistances aren't the same depending on where the the knob is in, in, in its travel and depending on the taper of that travel. This uh, copper strip can be spec'd out to be all different kind of not only resistances um, they can be 500 ohms they can be a million ohms uh, not only that but you can also have a different resistance on either side and you can have a different taper to this whole thing in other words at the halfway point up here it's not necessarily half of the resistance if if the taper dictates that um, that would be called a logarithmic or an audio taper, and this one happens to be a linear taper, which theoretically means that, in the case of this potentiometer, that resistance was close to half or somewhere in that ballpark. There's quite a variance in the manufacturing of these potentiometers in terms of um, plus or minus a certain amount uh, that they can be acceptably used. So... That's, that's pretty much the story of, of a potentiometer. Now, one of the things that's come up in my shop recently is the difference between a volume pot and a tone pot. And the difference between a volume pot and a tone pot is simply how they're wired. That's it. Any potentiometer, this potentiometer here, this Audio 250K, which this one is for an amplifier, but this value can be found in Stratocasters and, and all kinds of other guitars, particularly single coil equipped guitars, that potentiometer can either be a volume control or a tone control. In the case of a volume control, this pin here, the number one pin right here, would be soldered directly to ground. In other words, the back of the pot casing. In, in the case of a, a Strat or a Tele, etc. This casing would then be soldered to a string ground. Okay, so you would attach this to ground. That means that the, the wiper would be bleeding off to ground a certain amount through the resistance attached here. On the other side, in the case of a volume control, uh, this would be ground. The wiper would actually be the output of the potentiometer. And in a Stratocaster, that connector goes goes directly to the output jack. In the case of pin 3, which is over here on this side of the resistance, pin number 3 is connected to the switch on a Stratocaster, for example. Uh, in amplifiers, all of these can be wired differently to do different duties, but just the very most basic is a volume control on a, on a guitar. And this pin would come from the switch on the Stratocaster. So all the pickup switches and tone controls, everything would feed right to here. Actually, the tone controls are separate. That's another issue. But uh, the volume, uh, or rather the switch for all those pickups, would feed here to pin three. Okay. Then it would be varied by where the knob is placed, and thus where the where these wipers are placed along this resistance here and would create volume because on the other side you're grounded so it's it's shunting that to ground depending on where the volume control is okay now in the case of a tone control you're doing almost exactly the same thing except you are shunting signal to ground through a capacitor and the capacitor will decide what frequency is shunted to ground. In the case of a tone control, it would be treble frequencies dictated by whatever ca capacitor you decide to use. All right, so that's that's kind of a real short uh, basic summary of uh, potentiometers and how they work in a very basic sense. You can get into a lot of different theories on um, you know different wiring for potentiometers. There's Gibson 50 style wiring which uh, configures this slightly differently as far as the tone control is concerned. But the basic thing to remember is that a pot which sits under a knob okay is varying resistance and how it's wired um, and that's it it gives you complete control over those things it's one of the things that makes guitars and amps fun to play is the ability to control them that's all I've got on the subject for now and that's all I have for today hope you enjoyed this little video if you have any questions feel free to contact us here at Granville Guitars on the web or on Facebook. Have a good day.